Installhub.com. Streamlining your installations. Another week, another podcast. We've made it to Friday, the 4th of August. So let's see what's been happening this week in, you guessed it, this very busy industry. Starting with this, CEO Elon Musk says the Cybertruck beats rivals in space utility. It's shorter than a Ford F-150 with a longer bed, and it's longer than a Rivian R1T with far more space overall. So Elon is struggling to see where the competition really lies. It's not a shock that Elon Musk is coming at it uh, with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, to say the least. EV leasing group Onto is up for sale after LNG has pulled its backing. Onto, which operates an electric vehicle subscription service, has drafted in Deloitte to explore a sale weeks after Legal in general said it would not inject more money, Sky News has reported. Onto is working with Deloitte on sale or other forms of financing in an attempt to place it on a sustainable financial footing. Deloitte's work has emerged just weeks after Legal and General LNG told Onto that it would not plough additional money into the business. LNG committed £22.5 million in May and June on top of previous funding. Robert Jolly, CEO and co-founder of Onto, said in a statement on Tuesday, Onto has engaged Deloitte to consider strategic options for the group, including potential further recapitalisation as we navigate the second half of 2023 and beyond. In other news, Porsche, or Porsche, however you want to say it here on the podcast, we're not fussy, has been testing the electric version of the Macan on public roads for the last almost two years. And this process will finally come into accumulation with the full and official debut of the vehicle next year. Now, you don't have to wait until Porsche lifts the veil on its fully electric SUV to see its design, because a new batch of spy photos shows a prototype of the model with almost no camouflage covering the exterior. This is by far the best look of the Macan EV so far, and it does reveal the front fascia with Taycan-esque headlights. There is also some black tape covering small sections of the lighting clusters, but other than that, the front end is virtually undisguised. The lower section of the fascia also features a trapezial-formed bumper with the shape extending into the lower bumper diffuser. Above that, in the two corners of the bumper there is a pair of additional lights that seem to have cornering function we're not sure of course this is just at first glance exactly what's going on but we can kind of gauge and if you too wish to have a look well our good friend google has many pictures of the mccann ev It's sad to report on, but apparently charge points for electric vehicles are sitting there with no power due to the lack of capacity, a motorway service boss has warned. Ken McKennion, who is chief executive of Moto Hospitality, which operates motorway service stations across the UK, said the lack of power capacity for charge points is a major problem facing the electric vehicle industry. Speaking on BBC Radio 4, McKeon revealed that charge points at four moto locations are sitting there with no power, leaving EV drivers unable to use them. He said unless targets are set for power companies to provide enough power for charging points across the country, it will simply not be possible. And obviously, if you're an EV driver, I'm sure it's something you have sadly experienced. And as you'll know, it just isn't going to work and it is not sustainable. BMW has boasted electric car spending to catch up with Tesla. The automaker expects EVs to make up to 20% of sales next year, and companies are increasing the delivery outlook for 2023 to solid growth. Now, BMW aren't falling behind when it comes to EVs, but of course, they're nowhere near Tesla's level. But a lot of people question, does any company have the money to put in? Obviously, don't forget, Elon is ahead of the game massively. But if these companies do, where will that leave Tesla? It's not all bad news for EV motorists. The growing EV market has presented dealers with an unmissable tyre opportunity. New consumer research by EMAC is conducted by the ICDP showed that the independent automotive consultancy identified high levels of interest among EV buyers for bespoke after-sale packages covering the replacement of tyres due to faster wear because of the additional weight of EVs. EMAC believes 
dealers have an opportunity here to offer EV customers more personalized pick and mix style ownership packages, which will help protect them against additional running costs while maintaining workshop utilization and offsetting some of the revenue shortfall caused by diminishing oil and filter sales. I did mention before on the podcast with regards to uh, lighter tires that have been created for EVs, but if you're an EV driver, would you be interested in this tire opportunity as it's being put? In other news this week, Ferry Bridge Motorway Service Station has been forced to bring in a generator to power new EV chargers. A busy motorway service station in Yorkshire has had to bring in a generator to power the new EV chargers because of a lack of supply. A dozen ultra-rapid chargers at Ferry Bridge costing £70,000 each was supposed to go live in June, but the operator Moto has had to bring in a generator fueled by hydronated vegetable oil to prevent provide the power for six. The council is asking for public feedback as it considers nine new EV charging points in six North North Hampshire towns, including Corby, Wellingborough and Kettering. Now here's how you can have your voice heard. Locations are being considered in Kettering, Corby, Wellingborough, Rhodes, Undall and Earls Bolton. Councillor Jason Smithers, who's leader of the council, said if you live near to one of the proposed sites or are an electric vehicle user or are just considering becoming one i encourage you have your say before the 25th of august now there's more information online if you just type into google council asks for public feedback with regards to six north nor hampshire towns including ev charge points or ev charge points north hampshire town then it will come up and there is actually a survey that you can do online octopus electric vehicles part of octopus energy group has launched a second-hand salary sacrifice scheme for evs the nearly new leasing offers allow consumers to purchase secondhand which is less than two years old evs for considerably reduced costs by offering cheaper alternatives to buying new evs the company is hoping to make driving electric more accessible alongside poor charge point experiences the cost of evs has been numerously highlighted as one of the main deterrents for potential ev drivers under this new scheme drivers can pay an estimated 300 pound to access a second-hand ev such as the renault zoe or the peugeot e208 as well as fuel insurance and maintenance costs in a similar structure as cycle to work the salary sacrifice scheme allows drivers to save between 30 percent and 40 percent per month by paying through their gross salary. In solar news this week, a collaboration of five UK community energy groups has initiated share offers to fund the transfer of seven operational solar farms into community ownership. The newly formed consortium, known as Community Energy Together, or CET, aims to bring these solar farms under community ownership through public investment. The solar farms located in Shropshire, Kent, Devon, Isle of Wight and Swansea have a collective total capacity of 36 MWP, which is sufficient to power around 12,750 homes and save an estimated 317,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide during their lifetimes. Four of the community benefit associates have already launched their share offers on the 31st of July, with the fifth Goa Power in Swansea expected to follow suit soon. If successful, this move is predicted to significantly increase the capacity of community-owned solar energy in England and Wales by approximately 20%. Moreover, the initiative is projected to generate a collective community benefit fund of around 20 million, which will be directed towards supporting local, social and environmental projects. Here's a new one for you. Listen to this. Energy storing concrete could form foundations for solar-powered homes. A mixture of cement and fine charcoal can become a super capacitor that could someday charge homes or electric vehicles. Now, a mixture of cement and charcoal powder could enable houses to store a full day's worth of energy in their concrete foundations. This new way of creating a super capacitor, an alternative to batteries that can discharge energy much faster, it could be incorporated into the foundations of both buildings and wind turbines. 
turbines when paired with renewable energy sources. It could also someday let concrete road foundations wirelessly recharge electric vehicles as they drive along. The materials are available for everyone all over the place and all over the world, says Franz Joseph, who is at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He says with the materials being so readily available, it means we don't have the same restrictions as we do with batteries. Morocco is to reportedly award a new contract for a solar project. The Nor Medelt 2 project is set to consist of a photovoltaic power plant equipped with a two-hour energy storage capacity. The news comes after the country's renewable energy agency selected a number of companies as potential candidates. According to news reports cited by Zawaya, Morocco is close to finalising Norma Delts 2 package. The country is expected to announce soon the name of the company that will build the new complex. The project's solar photovoltaic power plant represents the second undertaking in the Normadel solar energy complex located in the Atlas Mountains of central Morocco. In July, Mason announced that six consortiums have been pre-qualified to undertake the construction of the project. As you may have heard this week, and as reported by the BBC News Online, a businessman cheated a council out of tens of millions of pounds and went on a spending spree with the cash, an investigation has discovered. Leaked documents reveal how Liam Cavagan used Thurrock Council's money to buy luxury goods, including a yacht and a private jet. The council has been made effectively bankrupt after investing £655 million in Mr Cavagan's solar farm business. Mr Cavahan's lawyers say all the payments were permissible. They say they were approved by his company's finance team and auditor. Thurok is one of a number of councils that have gotten into financial difficulties since the coalition government gave local authorities more freedom to raise funds and invest back in 2011. Woking, Slough and Croydon have all been forced to stop all non-essential spending after losing public money on risky investments. Holden Group has invested more than £500,000 in solar panels to power its car dealerships in Norwich. With 992 panels installed on the roof of Holden Volvo, Kia, Renault, Dacia, Honda and MG, Holden Group expects the energy produced to offset almost two-thirds of its annual consumption and to pay for itself in just 3.6 years. Adrian Guest, who is Group Project Manager for Holden's Group, said this is a significant investment for the business and demonstrates our commitment to sustainable energy use. Recent figures from the SMMT show that across the UK, pure electric cars were second most popular behind petrol cars, with a market share of more than one in six which is 16.9 percent since the installation completed we've already saved the equivalent amount of carbon as planting 634 trees and we expect to make 1205 metric tons of carbon saving over the next 25 years and finally, UK-based venture capital investor Jensen Funding Partners has launched a £60 million fund focused on startups developing net-zero transition solutions. The Aurora Fund will target early-stage startups in the green tech sector and is aiming to close a funding gap revealed by a Tech Nation report that found climate tech startups struggled to secure funds between the seed and Series A stage. There are some fantastic companies out there that are busy making greener alternatives affordable and practical. We see this as a critical step to encouraging the mass adoption of more sustainable ways of living and doing business, said Sarah Barbara, who is CEO of the Jensen Funding Partners. It's a great initiative and it's always good to back the underdog because people on the way up can't be on their way down. So that is all from me. I'll be back with you next Friday. And remember, if you're an installer, we will help to streamline your installations. Just visit installhub.com. And from everybody here, you have a fantastic weekend.